we will discuss osteoporosis in this video and osteoporosis is essentially a bone disease and the fundamental uh, aspect of osteoporosis is that over time as a person ages you have decreased bone density and the deterioration of the bone structure and the skeletal weakness eventually will lead to bone fractures and that's of course a very worrisome uh, aspect of aging now what happens is um, in the body you have these cells known as osteoblasts and osteoblasts are responsible for making bones now we also have cells known as osteoclasts and osteoclasts are the cells that are responsible for resorption of bone and uh, there's a very close balance between these two cells now the bone formation that occurs is like I mentioned closely balanced with the bone loss in a healthy young adult and when you're in your 20s you have a peak uh, bone mass but unfortunately what happens over time is that the osteoblast and the osteoclast relationship changes and as the person ages the amount of bone loss slowly slowly outweighs the bone formation and when that occurs slowly slowly your bone density decreases so first you go through something called osteopenia which is uh, sort of a precursor of osteoporosis and then you have full-blown osteoporosis later on so let's talk about why this would happen what are the, some of the risk factors involved in developing osteoporosis well as I mentioned uh, aging and in particular I really want to focus on menopause in women it's a very very important um, part of the risk factors involved in osteoporosis another one is a person's lifestyle can really affect a development a sedentary lifestyle can be a risk factor diet that is poor in calcium and vitamin D is very important family history of osteoporosis low BMI and low BMI is not just in elderly people but even young people for example athletes and you see this a lot in female athletes for some reason uh, that are very very slim very skinny other risk factors include uh, smoking and long-term use of steroids glucocorticoids for example can also lead to osteoporosis so some of the symptoms what are the symptomatology how would somebody present well for the most part osteoporosis is asymptomatic it's usually detected um, during diagnostic testing or uh, it's usually considered when somebody is above a certain age like 65 or when they have passed menopause but if you do have symptoms some of the symptoms include uh, spinal tenderness and this uh, back pain that can present itself and then also uh, something known as kyphosis which is uh, when a person has sort of a bent over hunchback you see that a lot with um, certain elderly people that need to walk with a cane they're sort of hunched over and then eventually unfortunately um, if the bone density is weak enough it can lead to fractures so how do you diagnose this well the most important test something I need to really uh, discuss is known as a DEXA scan and a DEXA scan is a very important aspect of osteoporosis uh, diagnostic um, uh, workup and this uh, DEXA scan measures the bone density and it's done in a very interesting way it's done by comparing the patient's bone density to the bone density of others and there's two scores that are given there's two uh, results there's a t-score and there's a z-score so very important to know the difference a t-score basically is the comparison of the patient's uh, bone density to healthy young adults 
So that's very important to remember. A z-score is comparing the patient's bone density to people of the same age. So whatever way you want to remember, it, remember this, uh, I remember it like z uh, is same. It just it's just how I remembered it. Z is same or same, whereas T is the healthy young adults, and it's given as a uh, standard deviation. The result. So, for example, osteoporosis is known as a T score less than or equal to minus two point five standard deviations, and osteoporosis is divine, defined as a Z score less than or equal to minus 2.0 standard deviations. So when you do this uh, test, if uh, the results come back, you have to look at the result uh, as a t-score or a z-score. And if it's less than 2.5 as a t-score or less than 2.0 as a z-score, the patient has indeed osteoporosis. So treatment. well. Before we jump into osteoporosis treatment, all, all patients that are greater than 65 should be given vitamin D and calcium supplements, regardless of whether they have developed osteoporosis or not. And that's just standard. And also, if a woman is greater than uh, 65, or actually even less than that, but she's past menopause, then... Um, uh, you should definitely recommend vitamin D and calcium. And you should probably even recommend an osteoporosis medication if she's past menopause because menopause kind of goes hand in hand with oste osteoporosis. So what are those osteoporosis medications? They're known as bisphosphonates. And what's important is that they inhibit the bone resorption. So they're very important um, in preventing further bone loss. Now, they're given, you know, rather interestingly, one of the few medications out on the market that can be given uh, in a way so that you don't have to take it once a day. And I'll write the, the three types, and then I'll give you sort of the details. The most common is alendronate, and alendronate, the good news is that it's given once a week. The next one is ibandronate, and ibandronate only has to be taken once a month, one pill a month. And then rizidronate is actually an IV medication, and that's only given once a year. Now the ones that are oral, these two, have certain specific instructions, and those specific instructions are sometimes tested you have to take the oral medications on an empty stomach and you have to take it with a lot of water, 8 ounces of water and then you have to sit upright for 30 minutes so very specific instructions but fortunately it's only taken once a week or once a month now one other thing I wanted to mention is that in addition to the bisphosphonates you also want to recommend hormone replacement therapy. And hormone replacement therapy is given as estrogen and progesterone together. Uh, the reason that you give the progesterone in addition to the estrogen is because by giving both of them together, you risk uh, that you decrease the risk of endometrial cancer. So that's why they're given together. So let's take a look at some clinical vignettes and see what this looks like. A 67-year-old woman comes to your office because she's concerned about osteoporosis. She went through menopause at 56, has no history of bone fractures, no smoking history, and no known family history of hip fractures. Her weight is 51, height is 60 centimeters, physical exam is unremarkable, uh, dual x-ray absorbed uh, metry shows average z-score of 1.6 and t-score of 0 0.9. This test is a, a DEXA scan. Now you have 
uh, completed a basic screening for osteoporosis, your patient returns to your office for interpretation of your test results. At this time, it's most appropriate to inform the patient. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. Her Z-score is 1.6. Now, remember, Z has to do with comparing her bone density to people of the same age. And her T-score is 0 0.9. And the T-score has to do with comparing people, uh, comparing the patient's bone density to healthy young adults Now, neither of these uh, test results are make her osteoporosis because remember, to be osteoporotic, you need a T-score less than 2.5 and uh, minus 2.5, and you need a Z-score less than or equal to minus 2.0. So her test results do not show that she's osteoporosis, in osteoporosis. So she probably doesn't need alendronate at this point. So that's out. Because of her age, I would definitely recommend that she takes calcium. So that's good for now, but let's see its choice C and D. C says, compared to age-matched controls, her bone density is 0 0.9. Now, compared to age-matched controls, for her, her result is 1.6 standard deviations below the mean. And then, so that's wrong. And then choice D, compared to healthy young adults, her bone density is 1.6. Compared to healthy young adults, her bone density is 0 0.9 standard deviation. So choice C and D are kind of trying to confuse you. They're trying to mix it up. So the answer is B. Uh, next one. A 17-year-old female comes to your office with an eight-month history of amenorrhea. Menarche occurred at age 12, and her menses were regular until the past year. Patient's vital signs are in the normal range for her age except a BMI of 16, below the third percentile for her age. She works out regularly. She admits that she follows a strict 800 calorie per day diet to keep in shape. You order a bunch of tests, which of the following is also recommended? Well, this is a young female um, who works out a lot. Most likely, I would probably say she might be an athlete and her BMI is really low. So these are risk factors for developing osteoporosis, even if you're so young. She's only 17. A low BMI is one of the risk factors. So I would definitely uh, order a DEXA scan to check for osteoporosis. Next question. 55-year-old woman comes to the office for periodic health maintenance exam. Her review of systems is positive for fatigue, recent weight gain, temperature intolerance with hot flashes being frequent. Uh, her last menstrual period was seven months prior. She smokes one half pack cigarettes a day. She appears to her stated age, 55, and is in no uh, distress. Physical exam, vitals are essentially normal. Physical exam also is unremarkable. Uh, concerning her post-menopausal status, the most appropriate intervention to reduce long-term morbidity and mortality is. Okay, what's well, a very good question. The very first thing that I notice is that she's postmenopausal. So the question is, how do you uh, reduce her long-term morbidity and mortality? What are the things involved? What are the things you need to discuss? Well, the first thing, of course, is hormone replacement therapy. You need to discuss it with her and see if she will be willing to take it based on the risks and benefits. And um, Hormone replacement therapy is given as estrogen plus progesterone. But in addition to the fact that she is postmenopausal, she also is at risk of osteoporosis because of her age and also the fact that she smokes. So it also, um, in addition to giving a recommendation for hormone replacement therapy, I would also give a recommendation for an osteoporosis medication, which would be a bisphosphonate. So the total uh, recommendations would include both. So that would be choice C. So all of those. And then finally, a 58-year-old woman comes to the office for a periodic health maintenance exam. You notice in her chart that her menstrual period was two years ago, last menstrual period. At that time, she was not interested in discussing hormone replacement therapy. 
Now she says that she has noticed that a few of her friends have been shrinking and she is ready to take something for osteoporosis. She read that a woman with thromboembolic disease should not take estrogen. She vaguely remembers having a few blood clots many years ago. Uh, dual energy absorptiometry DEXA shows a bone mineral density that is more than 2.5 standard deviations below the mean. Alendronate is prescribed. The patient should be advised to. This question is basically just telling you uh, what are the instructions given when you give a bisphosphonate such as alendronate. Alendronate uh, basically is taken first thing in the morning on an empty stomach, full glass of water, and you have to remain upright for 30 minutes. So very specific instructions.